All right, so section two. Um, I hope it was clear in the previous sections that what we're doing in this chapter is expanding our ability to take derivatives and antiderivatives. So um, I mentioned that we, we like the natural log of x because it turns out that there's a connection between the integral of 1 over x, the definite integral of 1 over, sorry, 1 over t, we called it, um, 1 over t dt and the natural log of x. Okay, so now in this section we just make the general statement that the antiderivative of 1 over x dx is equal to the natural log of the absolute value of x, which um, this absolute value might be throwing you off, but functionally when we are just doing our work, uh, when we say the antiderivative of something is the natural log of, that we just put and absolute value signs there instead of parentheses, basically. But the, you know, the reason why is because the natural log is not defined for negative values of x. Like the natural, the natural log of negative 2 is not defined. Uh, so if x happened to be negative 2 here, uh, we, like, this would be not defined. So we just say, well, when x is negative 2, we'll just take it to be positive 2. Uh, so it's functionally. That's, that's how we use it. Um, so in this section, we just go crazy. We take the, der the antiderivatives of, of lots of things of this form, okay? And when I mean of this form, I mean if we can make it so that we have 1 over a function times its derivative, or another way to look at it is the derivative over the function, the function under its own derivative, then we can just say that's the natural log of u, okay? That these don't look any different, right? That x and u, only u is understood in calculus to be uh, a, a placeholder for another function, a f another function of x. Okay, so let's take a really simple example, like the antiderivative of one, uh, let's say, yeah, two x. Let's say two x over x squared dx. Okay, this is a really simple example. This here is a function. Um, this is a function. We could call it u. And this up top, right? We could we could really multiply these together, and we could have two x dx in the numerator. Okay. Then if this is u, this would be the derivative of u. And this then the antiderivative would be the natural log of u, which is x squared. Right. So if we can see functions this way as a function underneath its own derivative, we can use the natural log to take antiderivatives. Let's look at another way. Um, you know, another example, the, the antiderivative of the cosine of x over the sine of x dx. Uh, well, again, this could be treated as u. This could be treated as du. The derivative of sine of x is cosine x dx. And so this becomes the natural log of, I forgot to put absolute value sine over here, the absolute value of sine. All right, if we took the derivative of this, we would get 1 over sine times the derivative of sine because of the chain rule, cosine x dx. So this section is about seeing things that way. Okay. Now, one way, or, or, or one, uh, you know, plus to this is it. Not only do we learn that the antiderivative of one over x dx is natural log of x, um, we can also take something like the antiderivative of tangent dx, tangent of x dx, rewrite it so it's the antiderivative of the sine of x over the cosine of x dx, take this to be u, this is u, and this is almost du, except the, the derivative of cosine would be negative sine, so we need a negative sine. So now this is the, uh, the, the derivative of u, so this is du. Of course, we can't just throw negatives in there because we want to. We have to balance it out. It started out as the derivative of the antiderivative of tangent, 
That's a positive sine over cosine. So if we make this negative, we should put a negative multiplier here so that negative times negative is positive. Okay. So now the antiderivative of tangent is equal to negative the antiderivative of this expression. And this is written in the, the form du over u, which means we can say that this is equal to the negative of the natural log of the absolute value of cosine. Okay, so now we uh, have the antiderivative of tangent of x dx is equal to negative natural log of the absolute value of cosine x. Okay, like if you if you look back in your memory, you'll uh, recall in your light blue cloud of memory that we knew that the antiderivative of sine of x dx was equal to negative cosine x and the antiderivative of cosine x dx was sine x plus c plus c um, but then to go beyond that we didn't have the antiderivative of say tangent we had the derivative the antiderivative of secant tangent because earlier in life we learned that the derivative of secant the derivative of secant was secant tangent. So if we could get something in the form of secant tangent, we would get secant, you know, secant. The antiderivative of secant tangent would be secant. And then we had, uh, like, secant squared. Well, that was, secant squared is the derivative of tangent. And so if we had secant squared, we could uh, take the antiderivative of secant squared was tangent. But using log rules, we can expand our knowledge of logs uh, to all sorts of other things like the uh, the derivative or the antiderivative of the secant which is given on page 337 the derivative of secant x dx or the secant of u du is equal to the natural log of the secant plus tangent Right, and so now we can take the antiderivative of secant, of cosecant, of cotangent, um, and expand our antiderivative laws or rules uh, by just a few more antiderivatives using log rules. So um, that's pretty cool. And those those are all given on page 337. If we want to reference them, use them in our homework, which we will. Um, and that is pretty much it. it the log rules and taking antiderivatives using the log rule. Um, first, we understand now how to, to take new kinds of antiderivatives of a different form of uh, du over u. And then also, it just a, a, a lucky happenstance of that is, is that we get to take the, the antiderivative of all of the uh, trig functions, sine, cosine, cosecant, secant, tangent, cotangent. So um, we'll cover some examples in the sample problems video. If you have any questions and you need to clear anything up, get in contact with me. Thanks for watching.